don't blame them for anything. They're not a part of your marriage. When you said yes to each other before God and witnesses, you became a new family. All right? Don't bring the in-laws into the situation. Don't run back to your parents. Yeah, no way. I wouldn't want my kids to move back with us. And I hope they're watching. But no, I really do. No. <laughs> Don't come back. <laughs> Don't run to your parents every time you have a conflict. My, my husband, my wife is. <laughs> Number 10, never let the, what? Never let the sun go down on your anger and give the devil an opportunity because that's what happens. If you stay angry after the sun has gone down, you give the devil an open door to come in and harass your relationship. It is not cool. And I've done it. We've all, you know, Kathy's done it. Married people, we understand this. This it's, And it's terrible. And it feels terrible. It's just our pride. You know, you get in an argument at 11 o'clock at night. You're both tired. And when you're tired, it's hard to resolve an argument when you're exhausted. The argument goes on until 2 o'clock in the morning. Then you go to sleep. You pretend you're sleeping for the next five hours. You wake up totally exhausted and even angrier because you didn't resolve it. Because you've already given the devil permission to harass you in that area. That's when you need to repent resolve and kick the devil out of that situation, all right? Don't let the sun go down. I heard one marriage counselor say, uh, <clears throat> if you're going to resolve conflict, do it before 9 o'clock. You just got to deal with things before 9 o'clock at night, before you're tired and exhausted. Deal with things while you're still alert, you know, or even earlier. Question. Yes? What, what if there comes up an argument like 11? <laughs> if, if there's an argument, that come, I, I would say, first of all, as much as possible, if there's something bothering a spouse, try to, if it's 11 o'clock at night, try to keep it to the next day, to talk about it the next day. That's really the ideal thing. Because when you bring up something late at night, it will usually get worse before it gets better. If you can at all wait, and some things can't wait, but if you can, try to wait to the next day. And then just next day, just say, hey, there's something I need to talk with you about. And uh, what, when would be a good time for you? And then just come together and discuss it then. Okay, I'm going to give you number 11, too, just because I'm that kind of a guy. <laughs> One more. One more, a bonus commandment here. And this is something Kathy and I learned just in the last few years, and I'm so glad we did, and that is repent even if you don't think you did anything wrong. That's really important. That didn't happen after. Huh? Oh, that's right. It didn't have a never. Wow, you're doubly blessed then. Okay, yeah, so um, repent even if you don't think you did anything wrong. And it is, it's such a prideful thing, but it's, it's our human nature. We all deal with this. We get into a conflict. One spouse says, you know, you hurt me. I felt hurt when you did this. And the other spouse says, well, I didn't mean that, though. But when you said this, it hurt me. But I didn't mean that when I said it, so I shouldn't have to say I'm sorry. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't mean it. You misunderstood me. It's all your problem. That's not the way to go. You're not gonna, you're not gonna come to a resolution there. When your spouse says, I was hurt when you said or did this, even if it was totally misunderstood, even if you didn't mean it at all, if your spouse feels hurt by something you did, even if it was imagined or twisted in some way, mm -hmm. you immediately choose humility and say, please forgive me. That was not my intention. I am so sorry I came across that way to you. I love you very much. Choose humility. Humility puts out the fire. It's like, phew, gone. And it doesn't give the enemy Please remember this thing. Don't wait until you've been married 30 years like Kathy and I. We were always trying to defend our position when we had an argument. And then we read a good marriage article while we were on a date and found this out. It's like, wow, that makes perfect sense, you know? <laughs> How cool. Don't defend yourself. When you're just constantly defending yourself, that's just pride. You know? You got the problem. I don't have the problem. You sinned. I didn't sin. It's your problem. 
No, just own up. Own up, even if you don't think you did anything wrong, and just say, I am sorry. And, and really apologize. Don't just say, well, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> you big liar, you're not sorry at all. You say, eye to eye contact, I'm sorry. Would you please forgive me? I love you, I value you, I love our relationship. And then pray together. Okay, okay marriage can be heaven on earth, and it can also be hell on earth. It is our choice. And so I want to close in prayer, and I want to invite you to commit to Jesus, to be a man and woman of God, that he is, to be the man or woman of God that he's called you to be. Um, if you're married, as these two are, invite Jesus to renew your love with your spouse. And uh, if you're single, as most of you are, uh, to invite Jesus to, to make you into that man or woman of God that he wants you to be, to prepare you. Now is the time to prepare for getting married. We meet a lot of single people who say, yeah, I want to get married, but they're not doing anything to prepare themselves. <laughs> you need to prepare yourselves for that, for that, for that mate. You, you can begin investing in your marriage right now, even if you don't get married for several years. All right. Other than praying for Other than praying for the other person, what? What, what would that look like? What would that look like? Yeah. It yeah. means being a woman of God. Being a woman of God. Being a woman of humility. Realizing that, okay, I'm going to start honoring and respecting the people in authority over me now. I'm going to, I'm going to you know, incorporate these things into my life. Yeah, walking these things out now. In the relationships that I have around me now. Let's pray.